I am Tiffin Hanna, and I first want to thank the Collier Center for allowing me to share my daughter's story here with you today. My husband and I have three precious children, and our middle child, Harper, who you got to see in the video earlier with Sweet Morgan, is who I want to tell you about today. But first, I would like you to see a little bit more of who she is. Walking in a line, we're following the leader. Check it now, check it now. Hello, Harper, hello. That crew's going down the slide. Yes. If it's something she's grown burn. <laughs> So Harper is four years old, and she has a rare genetic disorder called Angelman syndrome. It's referred to as AS sometimes, and she was diagnosed at age two. And when we first learned of the syndrome, I remember reading a very long list of problems associated with the disorder. Among developmental delays, seizures, lack of motor control, there were things listed that our child would never do, one being she would never speak. Not listed were issues related to feeding. And while many with AS do have problems with acid reflux or swallowing liquids, both of which do affect Harper, most love food. And actually a common trait is overeating and obesity. And this is completely opposite from our daughter who has always refused food and has barely consumed enough calories to thrive. We struggled finding other Angelman families who could relate to these same problems in the beginning and we felt alone. It's truly been one of the hardest battles we've had to endure. When we first came to the Collier Center, Harper was three and a half years old and still refused to eat solid food and drink from a cup. She had been in feeding therapy since she was 10 months old. And we tried so many different therapy programs from hospital settings to inpatient services, even private therapists. Nothing seemed to work. Even our therapists would tell us they had hit a wall and didn't know which steps to take next. She had already had surgery when she was a year old to insert a feeding tube directly in her stomach, so at least she could receive proper nutrition. And at one point we were advised uh, to enter an inpatient hospital program where she would have to live for a month at a time before she even began eating. We were desperate at that point and would try anything, but our constant fear was to enter another program that wouldn't work, and we wanted to make sure we had already exhausted all other options. It wasn't until our evaluation with Jenny McLaughlin, one of the speech pathologists you got to see in the video who runs the STEPS program, that we felt like we found somebody who understood Harper and why she didn't eat and why she had been so afraid to. Jenny explained to us that Harper's um, battle with acid reflux paired with our previous therapy techniques had made Harper afraid of eating, yet she didn't have the abilities to feed without somebody else's help. Basically, she associated eating and drinking with pain, and we had been forcing her to. We started the STEPS program, which was based on patience and education, and it made eating enjoyable for Harper and us. After just one week, Harper was voluntarily putting food into her mouth. <clears throat> for the first time, we had hope. Before then, we had felt like failures. Everything we tried didn't work and it exhausted us and drained us of all energy just to try and feed her throughout the day. Now, she lets us know when she's hungry and she is excited when we bring her food. It sounds really strange, but just to hear the crunch of her eating a cracker is still so heartwarming. When we realized that Harper would be nonverbal, we began researching and talking to other Angelman parents about the different augmentative and alternative communication programs. This is typically referred to by AAC, its acronym. It encompasses any way a person with complex communication needs can, um, can communicate. Uh, in anything from an audible iPod program to Velcro picture boards, even a um, paper flip book. <clears throat> we attended many lectures and conferences on the subject and continuously heard about the difficulties in finding the right program or therapist and the importance yet hardship of having to use it every single day. Our previous therapists didn't have a lot of experience with these different programs and the ones that they knew and tried with Harper weren't really a good fit. I had mentioned to Sarah Loving, the other speech and language pathologist you got to see in the video who runs Communication Connection, that we had wanted Harper to use a program that was popular with other Angelman kids. It's called POD, 
which stands for Pragmatic Organization Dynamic Display. This program approaches communication from a certain motor planning standpoint. It usually starts out as a printed paper board, paper book that you flip um, with printed icons and Helper can touch them to tell you what she needs or wants. This was a better option over the digital forms of communication like an iPad because of Harper's lack of um, fine motor skills. We were prepared to teach her this entirely on our own because we hadn't found a speech therapist that knew of this program until Sarah. She had taken it upon herself to begin researching pod and booked a flight to Minnesota for training all before we even first met her. From the very beginning, Sarah knew the work that would be required to get Harper adapted to this form of communication. And she knew it would take a long time before Harper would even begin to express her first words. I'll never forget when she smiled at Sarah and told her she was her patient for life in that very first evaluation. Sarah has no idea the impact that she had on our family in that one brief moment and has had every moment since. We knew then that we had found our home. Harper's life is filled with so many challenges, but with those come incredible achievements. We can't wait to hear her first word. Her sister is dying to know what her favorite color is. For any parent, a child saying their first word is a celebrated milestone. But imagine you're told your child will never speak. Now imagine what those first words are like. It might not be verbal, but we can't wait to celebrate that moment. For those who are nonverbal, AAC opens their world to communication. It gives Harper the confidence to know she can be heard. Her thoughts, needs, and wants are now validated with the interaction with the rest of the world. Without communication connection, it would take Harper years to learn how to navigate POD. It would have taken us years to learn the program to even be able to teach her. This is her voice, her language. She shouldn't have to wait years to tell us her favorite color or to say I love you or even a simple no. We are so grateful this program exists. And I want to stress how rare it is to have a program devoted to the individualized AAC needs of preschool age children. It gives Harper a head start above others who face similar challenges. I've only been able to give you insight today into our child's story, but the effect the Collier Center and their programs can have on others around DFW is invaluable. The few programs here that we've been a part of measure leaps and bounds above others when it comes to successful results and the education behind them. I want to thank Jenny and Sarah from the bottom of my heart for what they have done for Harper. As I look out into the audience today, I get to see family and friends, an amazing husband, and our therapists. And as the saying goes, it takes a village. Well, this is quite the village. For everyone at the Collier Center, thank you for improving the quality of our charter's life.